How's everybody? So, I wouldn't be here standing today if it wasn't for the Arab Spring Movement. And that's a big deal. You know, I'm 23 years old, so four years ago, I wouldn't be standing right here. Um, I have a question. Can you raise your hand if you are 23 years old or younger? Okay, awesome. We have a few hands. <laughs> raise your hand if you're 30 years old or younger. Few more hands, few more, okay. <laughs> now raise your hand if you are 30 years old or younger in heart. <laughs> there we go, a lot more hands, awesome. Um, but as you can tell, you know, we definitely are a room that is separated by uh, age, by generation. And uh, when I spend my time in the community, if I'm, you know, doing an action, if I'm you know, going to a conference, if I'm you know, planning, if I'm working to build a movement, um, what does the room look like? And uh, that's a really important question. What does the room look like? How do we make sure that when we talk about building a sustainable world, a world that works for all, what kind of room do we need to have in order for us to get there? And now the other big thing about the Arab Spring Movement, you know, this is a, a movement that started thousands and thousands of miles away from here. I've never been to Africa. I don't speak any languages other than English. How did, the, how did this movement put me to where I am today, where I call myself a storyteller, civic entrepreneur? How did these things make me who I am? A uh, 60 second video, it was, uh, and it went by Twitter, and it was uh, a man, his name is Mohammed Bouazizi, a man who wanted equality, believed in human dignity, and believed that he had something to sacrifice to make that happen. And it started a fire across the entire world. Um, this was 2011, this was 2011. I was 20 years old. I can't really tell you much about the first 18 years of my life. I grew up in a suburb. But I was so fortunate to be able to move to a city where there was a really strong community of people who, uh, thought about the future, who thought about equality, and all the, the values that make us uh, a better people. This is Portland, it's a great city. Um, and I just remember that first day, I remember that first day going down to Occupy. I'd spent time doing community work before, I volunteered a lot of nonprofits, but I never really figured that I could make uh, a vision in my community and work towards that. But I was surrounded by 10,000s of people people who I never saw before in my entire life. I recognize some people from uh, volunteering, I recognize some people from school, but this broad swath, this diversity of people, old and young and dark and light, and uh, from all walks of life, just a diverse group of people all coming together to create a change they wanted to see in their community. That really shook me up. Um, and it was really interesting because a lot of this happened because of social media. That's how we got the word out. Um, you know, here in my city, we don't even have a daily newspaper anymore. How do people get the news when it doesn't come to your doorstep? Uh, we have libraries that aren't open every day. Um, there's the information, it's harder and harder for us to communicate to each other, even though we are starting to live closer together. And I remember because of Occupy, I wanted to figure out ways that I could get the word out. Because I wanted people to learn about what I was doing, profile all the awesome people I was working with. And, uh, and when I was a kid, I remember, you know, setting up my MySpace. I got my, my favorite, you know, music videos. I put them on there. Nobody liked any of my music, apparently. It's a very lonely MySpace. But then MySpace wasn't cool anymore. And I had to create a Facebook. And I'd do it all over again. And nobody wanted to be my friend. Uh, <laughs> And then they started Twitter, and I was like, no. <laughs> I don't want to do Twitter. Um, but then Occupy came around, and I realized how important this was as a tool. And I created an account called Occupy Saturn. <laughs> and uh, I've got like 160 followers on that. But uh, it was really a good starting point where I could realize that content really does matter. You know, we live in an age where a lot of people might say social media is a big problem. You know, we have things like hashtag the dress. I'm still upset about that. You know, last week the, the golden blue or brown, I don't remember. <laughs> but um, there's frustrating things going on. But I think about all the other movements that have happened, like Black Lives Matter or the People's Climate March, a really amazing movements that we've never seen before. And uh, 
a lot of the strength from this comes from being able to use the technology, be able to use social media, and be able to use that as a platform of connection for social justice and human rights. And so that's what I, I came to talk about today. I talk, came to talk about the fact that our message matters. Um, how do we build a room that looks like this? And we have to be honest with ourselves about um, how much the times are changing in terms of power. We have to communicate power and we have to recognize that the way that we communicate is the way that we make change. And so now I talk a little bit about social media, I also want to talk about the fact that I am 23 years old and how do, how do I get to this point where it's because of social media that I start caring about these things? And it's a big deal. You know, I went to school, I went to a great school in Virginia and you know, we, we covered tons of topics. We covered, you know, literature, we covered history and science and math. I think I showed up to half my math classes, so don't ask me any calculus questions. <laughs> but um, I had years of education, and the second that I graduated, I came out into the world, and I was so lost. I was so confused. How do I, what, how do I find community? What's next? How do I find meaning in my life? I didn't get a chance to really learn meaning in my school. Um, but that shouldn't be the way things are. We have schools to build up our youth. And uh, it's so important for us to have different platforms of education, whether it's co-learning or other systems that we want to do to educate ourselves. We should definitely work on that. But we still have this system in place, this broad system that works with so many of our youth. And they come out of that, many of them, without having a connection to their community. So that's one of the things that I've taken on here in Oregon. How do we make sure that all of us are educated and empowered and understand human rights, understand human, social justice, and understand what does it mean to be what I like to call active citizenship? And this means a lot of things. We have so many wise speakers on this stage. We have so many wise speakers in this, uh, in this audience. And we all are really good at a lot of things. How do we make sure that these are things that people think that they can do, they can learn from? How do we have role models? and uh, give them something to look forward to, you know, as they become into adulthood. Um, and this means so many things. This means, you know, how do we change our business models so it shifts from capitalism to actually empowering and creating a stronger humanity. Um, it's talking about electoral reform, whether you're running candidates or you're pushing policy. Uh, it's talking about uh, the nonprofit sector. It's talking about being a neighborhood activist. How do you, you know, do zoning or create food systems, how all these things, all these things we don't talk about in our schools. So how do we make sure that we create standards so that all of our youth understand who they are and the change that they can make? So uh, that's what I came here to share. I'm glad that you guys listened to me. And uh, I also just want to put a plug in for Know Your City. I know you guys went on some of the tours. We actually are a really great nonprofit that also um, uses uh, the, the system of uh, capitalism to uh, sell uh, literature and tours on social justice and human rights. You guys can also make a, a donation if you want. We'll pass a hat around. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, these are, you know, this, this is it's really important for us to talk about um, how do we make sure that every generation comes to the table. We are a movement that's diverse and we all need to be empowered as leaders to get us over the finish line. Thank you.